Welcome everybody. We're going to quickly go to the word of God. Um, we continue with Asterisk today. We, for the past three weeks, this is the fourth week, we've been talking about the vision that is very important. Um, um, oh no. In other words, the vision as we read the first scripture that where the Bible says that where there is no vision, people cast off restraint because there is no plan. And it's great today that we know that to tickle ne plan go bombe to in the book of Jeremiah chapter 29. I know the plans that I have towards you, that I may give you expected end. In other words, I may give you a future and peace. Future and peace. Better future and peace. If we read from the book of John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus said the enemy, or the, the, the enemy, in other words, the devil doesn't come except to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that they may have life and have life more abundantly. Amen. We must fight until Sifuman is Sifuman of Abum. Sipilogo Babum, Yesu, Abu Promisayo. Life and more. That's what the Bible says. I came that you may have that life and have life more abundantly. Amen. As we will continue with our vision today, we're going to continue. We're going to be talking about our vision as uh, Rag Real Life Ministries, Cape Town. Rag Real Life Ministries, Cape Town. So we're going to be sharing our vision. Um, as a church, we need to be reminded all the time the vision that we have, the greater vision that we have that is based on the scripture. So we're going to be doing that today. Uh, we're going to be sharing our vision. How many of you still remember our vision? Amen. Amen. It's quite simple. So we're going to be going through that today because it is important, Basalwane, that um, the vision basically is it's based on, on the scripture, on the plan of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we just tailor-made it for ourselves. But it is based on what Jesus has planned for us and what Jesus has called us to do. He has a plan for our lives and we have to be in that plan and walk in the, and, and perhaps um, doing what God has called us and walk in the works that he has predestined for us. The Bible says that he has predestined our lives. It's not just by mistake that we are here. Even right here in Cape Town, it's not by mistake that you are here. You are here for a purpose. Amen. He will, whatever he does, he will do it and in, it is in his plans. He will, he will make sure that it's his plans and his plans will come to pass. It's only you who can stop the plan of God. So we're going to be going through our vision. As we're going through our vision, it's all about souls. It's all about people coming to Christ. It's all about reconciliation, bringing people back to God. The vision is all about that. You know, this, um, this morning when you open up news, you hear all these bad things. And the worst one today, as we're talking about the vision, it's what if, you've, if you know what happened in East London, 22 young kids died in each one in because there was a that 22 of them they died and nobody knows about again don't those things are the works of the devil because he's here to still kill and destroy amen so sing about an article sinum sevens woba abandu buzzer window Apo ba kuselekele kinda u eno tiko kinda u apo ba zau funda ngoku pila ogani ba fumano bo mu tiko abu promise lem. So we're gonna go through our vision, if you will, and if the guys are ready, them they're going to uh, okay. They've put it there already. As we know, our vision today, um, as right Cape Town is to serve, penetrate, and impact. As we look and at that, we we are in this community, so we we ought to serve this community and penetrate and make an impact. You want to make an impact in this community and Uchiko has called you to make an impact in this community. So we are here to serve. We are not just here for ourselves. I know you may be here and say if I can get a great job and do well for myself and get a nice house and get a nice car and I will have my life. Ubom is all about serving 
It's all about making sure that people around you and people around you at work, at the workplace or in your community. Amen. When God called Abraham, as he has called us today, remember when God called Abraham, and he said, Abraham, get out of your father's house, get out of your, of your country to the place I will show you. And I want to bless you. That's the first thing God promised Abraham, the blessing. And it's, it's not uh, common that Abandu Wangai fully blessing. All of us want the blessing. When God promised the blessing, it's something that we desire. And God doesn't only promise the blessing for yourself, so it's not wrong if you want to be blessed. But God said to Abraham, I will bless you and I will make you a blessing. That means you're not just going to be blessed, but the blessing that you have will make an impact. Not on you, but will make an impact. Not only you, only you will feel that impact. It will make an impact on the people around you. It will make an impact on the society, in the community. And God said to Abraham, and through you, many people will be blessed. Through you, many people will be blessed. That's what God is doing. We know when God wants to do something, as we read last week from the book of Judges, when God wants to save the people, when God wants to bless the people, he will use one of his people. In the book of Judges, when the Israelites were harassed and the Israelites were not having the peace that was promised by God in the promised land, God sent the judges to confront their enemy and to deliver the Israel. This is what God is doing today. So our vision is about that. It's about God delivering the people, his people. Remember last week we spoke about the world, that for God so loved the world that he gave his son, so that Abandu Banga, Banga had a song in the world, that it says that who believes in him shall not perish, that they may have everlasting life, that they may be safe from the attacks of the enemy, that they may be safe from all what the enemy has planned, as he has planned to kill still, to still kill and destroy. So if we look here, it says we are here to serve, penetrate, and impact. If you may just remember those three things, we are here to serve and penetrate and, and, and impact. We look at the life of Jesus. This is what Jesus did when he was here on earth. He served the people. He said, he says in his word that I did not come for my own, but I come for my father's. He said, my will is to do my father's, my food is to do my father's will. That's my food. What I enjoy is to do my father's will. He said, I came that the one that is lost may be saved. I came to save that which was lost. This is the impact that Jesus made in the society at that time. This is an impact as a church we are reminded, we are reminded to make so that wherever Jesus was, there was life. People followed him because he gave life. And today God is doing that through us. He's giving life in its abundance through us. He's giving life to the people in this world through us. I wonder if you want to go to the book of Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19. We're going to read from New King James Version. We're making an impact in our society and by being part of the society. We are part, you are part of society, aren't you? Yeah. Amen. Jesus said, I pray that you do not take them away from the world. Yeah. He says, I pray that you make them safe there and that they may make an impact. So through us, we as who wants to change the world. Amen. The Bible says we are not of this world, but we are here in this world to make an impact and to make a change. So we want to make a change as Jesus made the change. We want to make an impact as Jesus made an impact. Now if we read, this is a scripture that we read, I think two weeks back. It says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Song When you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit will come and live in the inside of you. And if we read from the book of Acts, it says when Jesus was about to go, he said, guys, I'm not leaving you alone. I'm leaving you with the Holy Spirit because through the Holy Spirit, you will be able to judge the world. You will be able to judge the society. You will be able to restore the society back to God, but through the Holy Spirit. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, it is the work of the Spirit. It is the work of the Spirit. Not you, the Holy Spirit that lives in the inside of you will change the world. So Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me 
We know that when he was baptized by John, the Bible says that the something fell upon him. It was like the dove, the spirit of God fell upon him. He was, he was baptized by the Holy Spirit and he was able to make impact spiritually, spiritually make a great impact in the society. So here Jesus is saying the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor as being part of the society, as being part of this greater Cape Town who are here to preach the gospel. What is gospel? It's good news. It's good news that God loved the people for God so loved the world that he gave for, to say God loves you, God cares for you. This is the good news that we should be preaching to the people. I know that there is bad news all over, but the good news is that God cares and God wants to be the part of our life. He wants to be part of your life. He wants to be part of the life of the sinners. He wants to save the sinners, literally save the sinners from the destruction. So it is good news that we preach that we as to come out so that you may be saved from destruction, that the devil may not come as and do as he pleases in your life. So we see from the Life of Brother Job, that God protects us. He protects you. Amen. He protects you. You may not uh, see it, but God protects you. If God may just open up in the spirit so that you may see, but he has no access. Amen. We have our one, like he did to Brother Job, remember? When he went to God and said, Umung and Penjitoba and Digan Bon Job Bangatin. And he's doing the same to you, but Uti I you can never because I protect you. This is my child. Amen. You see other things not happening in your life, you may think that maybe you are clever, maybe you are in a better place, maybe you uh, you, you 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 know how to go around things, but it is God. Amen. It is the protection from God. So God protects us, and this is the good news that we preach to the people. And he says here, yeah, he sent me to heal the broken heart. How many people that you know people who are depressed, people who are depressed, God has sent us that we may heal those broken hearts. Us, not him, but us. He has given us his spirit. Through his spirit, we will Heal the broken heart. Amen. There is many of them in our society. There is many of them. And we don't know what they are going through. But God is saying, I will heal your broken heart. And he is doing that to you. As Mdanawake, as Mdanawake, all of us will know that when we are going through some things and we cry out to God, he comes and saves us. The Holy Spirit is there to comfort us. The same comfort, the same ministry of the Holy Spirit, God wants you to avail that ministry to the people in the world, to bring people out of their misery. Abanyabandu, especially in our society here in Cape Town, Abanyabandu go, because my miserable, not because my funu no abo. Amen. Because they are, hiding from, they are hiding from other realities. They don't want to face other things. You know, Abanyabandu, they will tell you that, you know, I drink, not because it's Abanyabandu, I, will, I drink not because I want to drink. I drink because at least But Umoingolebazolane helps us that those broken hearts, Uchiko mends those broken hearts through the Holy Spirit. That's why you're here. If we are to make an impact, we have to make an impact in that's just that one person. Just that one person who's depressed, that one person who's not happy, that one person who has no peace, when you can make an impact and they will have peace. The disciples left their jobs and they followed Jesus. And when Jesus said, you can go back to your life, they said, no way, Paul said, Peter said, no ways, Lord, we can't go back to our ways. Because you as a child of God, you have life not just for yourself, the life that God has given you through the Holy Spirit is the very same life that must overflow and people may benefit from that life. Amen. You have something that people want when that overflows, the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the world will benefit. So we are here as Rock Real Life Ministries Cape Town to serve, penetrate and impact, make the same impact that Jesus made. 
make, make the same impact to the people as a proclaim. And it says to proclaim liberty to those who are captive. How many people that you know who are captive? We may talk about a lot of people in our society. They cannot stop drinking. Some cannot stop doing drugs. That we know in our society that you have a drug problem. Young people and some old people who are in bondage. Now the spirit of the Lord that is in us, Masalani, can deliver those people who are here to make an impact in those people so that Amen. I know that here at church there are people who are here to make an he wants to do the same to set people free from the bondage, from the things that they cannot help themselves from the things that has bound them in such a way that it's very difficult for them to say I can free myself the Holy Spirit can free them now Jesus is saying the spirit of the Lord is upon me that I do just that the recovery of the sight to the blind and it says to set at liberty those who are oppressed. This is making an impact in our society. Jesus did that as we know, that he went around and healing people. The Bible says that whenever he will go out every day, people will be delivered from the demonic oppression. People will be, deli will be healed from their illnesses. Singapore, you even comfortable, you don't even try, you don't even say it's going to, because Tito Masolani has given us that anointing to heal the sick. He said that you will, they will be baptized and they will heal the sick. They will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Yeah. So we do not just have the healing, have the life for ourselves. The life is for the people outside because Christ did not only come for us, he came for the world. That's why the Bible says that he Love the world so much that he gave his only begotten son so that whoever believes shall not perish. How many people that you perish around you? Those people should not be dying, perishing, but should receive the everlasting life that Jesus has asked. So we're saying we are here to serve, penetrate, and impact. I want you to say it. Say, serve, penetrate, and impact. If you may just convince yourself that I am here to serve, penetrate, and impact. Who, who, who is to serve? Their community, your workplace, your neighbors, people in your household, if they don't know Christ, you are here, you are there to make sure that they come to the knowledge of truth. So we're here to serve, penetrate, and impact. And secondly, if we look why, it says that by equipping every member, say every member, yes. or every believer. In this regard, we're talking about the member of our church. So we're here to save, penetrate, and impact our society. And we are also here to equip. That's why Bazalani Sifuna, everyone, I know, who are not yet serving, who are not yet understanding Inansega Im, Ipepos or not understanding why they are here. It says that equipping every believer, not some, but every believer, all of us. In other words, it means Funega Zongi Zandas Mese Kubin. Amen. All the hands on the plow. All the hands on the plow. So that means we are here to equip every believer, every member of our church to make an impact in our society, to serve here at church when we uh, need uh, some people to serve, to serve in our home cells, to come to prayer and pray as well. So to, in order for you to, to add value, you need to be equipped, you need to serve. And here we just read that the Holy Spirit is one thing that we need, the equipping. You may have the equipping during Sunday service when we come or in our home cells where we come together and we pray and we make a plan how we reach out to the people in the world. But also the Holy Spirit gives us a great advantage that we are able to go and equip, and in fact, and, and, and win the world, being equipped on Sunday and being equipped in the home cell. 
So we look at, again, a, an example of Jesus here. Jesus was such equipped people and he was so useful. So when we're saying that you make an impact, that means uber useful in the society. Amen. Uba useful. People look at you and say that uba uba ni akeko apa yafana. But uba akeko apa we siba worried because dry corner is not just change. So as a child of God, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about an impact. That cloud call na bonagale. Even here at church, you should wonder, Basalani, because uh, if cloud get kapet we we don't notice you. You should be worried. Amen. Amen. I was watching uh, something. I I, I, th I think it was yesterday, and um, there were there were people. They were playing the violin. I think it was uh, what do they call when a lot of people playing the violin? What is it? I'm not sure if it was because I think they were practicing, and then <laughs> yeah, they were practicing. So they were practicing and they were practicing, and there was an empty chair. The other lady was late, and then she came. Uh, Prepared, took out her violin and she apologized to the conductor. Say the, and then she, she said to the conductor, sorry, I'm late. And the conductor said, I had not noticed. <laughs> they were already playing. And she said, I'm sorry, I'm late. She said, I have not noticed. No more corner, no more walk. So you should be worried if doesn't matter. I know you might be saying, nah, no more at least they won't feel it. You should be worried. Because you, you must make an impact. Amen. In your society, Apushala Kona, Uba Awuko for many days, Abandu, Abakfona, Nokfona, let's say you went for holidays for two weeks, nobody calls you. You should be worried. Uba Abandu, you don't make an impact in their lives. Ukona Awuko, Gafan. You're not supposed to be like that. Amen. You still have a chance to make an impact so that you can leg. Amen. So we are here to self penetrate and impact our society. So if our clients impact, I also can leg. Now, you know, I'm not saying I'm not saying because so that is the finish. Because God can replace you. Amen. I know there are people who are saying, <laughs> but God can replace you. Amen. We appreciate you when you are here. They appreciate you in your society if you are there and you are making an impact. But you know what? We replace you. Even the society will replace you. Because you are useless when you are not available. We know that you can make a difference, but you are not available. You must be available. Amen. Amen. So we're here to make an impact. So Jesus is such a person. I want us to go to the, a simple scripture here that showed that Jesus was such a person. If you read from the book of John chapter, I think it's chapter 11 then. John chapter 11. If you go through the book of John chapter 11, you will notice there, that's when Lazarus died. Lazarus died. All of us, we've been to, through that scripture. Lazarus died and Jesus went away. When Lazarus was sick, they thought about Jesus. They thought about him. They called him. Because he was a world changer. He was, he was not just an ordinary person. They thought about him. He has come to follow like that queen Nagi because they know that you are not going to solve the problem. The reason why they called Jesus, they knew that Jesus will do something. But so feel like in our society, if you go to the house, 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 you go to the So Jesus was not there, and they called him. They said, Lord, Lazarus is sick. And Jesus, the Bible says that for, what, for some reasons he delayed and did not come, and Lazarus died. I want us to read this scripture that shows the impact, that shows the usefulness, that shows that Jesus was someone. And all of us in this place, I want to tell you, he has called you. Uba, stand out. Look at your neighbor and, and tell your neighbor that God has called you to stand out. Uh, I, I know that the 
when you when you give your life to Jesus, we are bonagal. Amen. Jesus put this clear. He said that you are the light of the world. Nobu so I I don't care. Nobu ubu 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 abasem vai class. Nobu ngafu no param sala klaku bu zumbuzo. But when you receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, then now the light has come upon you. And the light must shine. The Bible says that you are the light of the world. And it says that you cannot put the light under the table. How will it make an impact if it's under the table? The light is supposed to shine through the darkness. So if you are a child of God, it doesn't matter who you are, where you were born, whatever they told you, it doesn't matter now. Christ has redefined your life. Amen. Amen. Even if you're your family, they told you that, ah, when, uh, when uh, you, when you, 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 kondo, I know there are families who like that who will, uh, maybe some of your brothers or your sisters, they were more gifted than you. And when uh, you were not considered for anything, but God considers you now. Amen. God considers you because you are his child. So now Jesus here, when Jesus came and he came back and Martha and Mary, look at what they were saying to Jesus. We'll read verse 21. John chapter 11, verse 21. Now Martha said to Jesus, that's what they're going to say to you in this community, and I prophesy that it will happen to you. Amen. Amen. That your life will change. The same words that Martha said to Jesus, Martha said, Lord, if you had been here, we called you, you did not come, but if you have been here, my brother will not have died. Because Jesus was a world changer. He made an impact wherever he went. That's why Martha said, if Ubukona, Umfowetu, Genga Ganga Aswelek, Umdagatu Genga Ganga Aswelek, that's speaking to someone who makes the difference to them. And I believe, because, because here it was the Spirit of God. No, Jesus said that I do all of this because of the Spirit of God. He said that I heal, I deliver, because the Spirit is upon me. Didn't he say? We just read the scripture. He said the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to do this. All the works that he was doing, he was doing through the Holy Spirit. And he says the weak will do the same works in the book of John, he was telling the disciples that same works you will do, even greater works. Amen. Same works, the same things that Jesus was doing. People wanted to follow him. People wanted to be around him. Same thing must happen to us as the children of God because we have the same anointing, same spirit. The anointing to deliver, the anointing to set free, the anointing, the anointing to uh, liberate. So Martha said, Jesus, if you have been here, our brother will not have died. So I'm praying today that you will avail yourself to the Holy Spirit, to the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So that uh, the Bible says, let your light so shine, so shine in the darkness that the people can see. Because you are the light of the world. So if you are the light of the world, allow your light to shine in the darkness so that people can see that light. So you are supposed to be the person who makes a difference. Only you can stop that. Only you can stop the Holy Spirit from doing that. Remember Paul speaking to the church and telling them that do not quench the Holy Spirit. You know, about who are not allowing the Holy Spirit to minister because remember this is a ministry of the Holy Spirit. If we are to make an impact, if we are to make a difference in our society, it is the Holy Spirit. So we allow the Holy Spirit to avail ourselves to the Holy Spirit. We say Holy Spirit have your way. We be filled with the Holy Spirit all the time and we will make a great impact. Jesus, the Bible tells us that he will leave the crowd sometimes and he will go and refill. And when he's filled with the Holy Spirit, he will make a great impact. So, will make a great impact. Amen. We'll make a great impact. Remember, this is not by power, this is not by might, but it is by the Spirit of God. If you are not praying, if you are not connecting to the Holy Spirit, 
there is no way you will have that light. It's like when you have the light and you, you, you adjust that light and you do not have the fuel, you refuel so that the light can keep going and keep going. If we ought to win the world, if we ought to make the difference in the world, we ought to connect to the Holy Spirit all the time. That's why as Rock Cape Town, as Rock Real Life Ministries, we have prayer as one of our pillars. Prayer is one of our pillars. Because we know that without prayer, we will accomplish nothing. Amen. In prayer, that's where we intercede. In prayer, that's where we connect to God. In prayer, that's where we ask. That's where we give in thanks to God. So, prayer is one of our pillars. That's why when you pray and be filled with the Holy Spirit, you will make the greatest impact. Jesus was such a person and he was a man of prayer. And we're calling today that you may have a man and woman of prayer in order for us to make the great impact, to make the difference. So Jesus was adding value, spiritual value. Let's remember here, we are called to make the spiritual value. Uh, if we are to make the value, only that's not bad. But let it not be that you know, it, it happens. That Aban Bakumbuli jokes, but Aban need more than he jokes, Bazalan. Amen. Paul said, I came here so that Nindas only. He said, I did not come here for any other thing. Paul was very wise. He said, I refuse to be known by somebody who's wise because he was educated. And he said, I refuse to be known only. But I came that I may be known through the power of God here. Amen. So if you are whatever impact you are making in your community, but please don't put aside the spiritual impact because it is important. Amen. Oh, Please. You cannot open your mouth. Allow the Holy Spirit. Amen. Was one and done. We are when he was when he was ministering and working. We are Mazuas, oh, low Pilisayo, low Kululayo, low Kupa Matimun, low Fusavanda Bafileo. Amen. But if you can't do your Sabbath, the Bible tells us that we have spent a great deal of his life being a carpenter, working with his father, but even as long a carpenter, even as long a carpenter. That's why Because those things are by the way. Remember, all the things, the, the greatest calling is for us to restore the world to God. All other things that you are doing, the Bible calls them. The other things, the by the way, the things that is in there so that we can survive. We are servants, maybe you may be an accountant here, you're making money. This is just for you to survive. I know that um, when we go to heaven one day and account to Kazubuza by all the things you are doing, Kazubuza and accounting and all, Babu Kuanjanu, Kazubatin, you did not do better there. He will ask you about. The souls. He will ask you about your neighbor. He will ask you about the person that you did not tell about Christ. Amen. That's what will matter. That's what matters to He sent Jesus because he loved the world. So was one and don't know, please. Uba was one, guess near is in Tobasolani, Magveleg, Ukame, who was one good tick. Umoingo Magnetic lay. Amen. Umakas, you know, Basolan, this is so simple. I know that some Abandu has Buzba, how do I do it? 
The opportunity to minister is presented every day. Is there every day. Amen. God will open the opportunities all the time for you to minister. You will choose to minister or not. What do you do? Amen. Open the spirit say, can I pray for you? You pray for them. Uba, in your neighborhood, there is something that is happening. Go there. Avail yourself. Not because Ebesheli if you read the Bible, you hear that. Amen. 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 So that I mean, think about Jesus today. And then he will make an impact. business He saying he was saying, I am busy with my father's business. I remember when he started to marry, they asked him, where have you been? You got lost. He said, why do you ask me, woman? I'm busy with my father's business. So we're here to make an impact. And we look for every opportunity to make an impact. Because the world is dying. As you know, the world is dying. People are dying. And Usatana is Having a party in killing, stealing, and destroying God's people who are here to make an impact. Who are here because Umoyakatiko is upon us, not just for us to have, to have the blessings and to have the healing that we have, but the Spirit of the Lord is here upon us. He's, it's, it's, it's here upon us. We are here. So we're saying, Fulega Abandu. So that, uh, uh, just to, 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 to finish, we we'll go back to the vision. We're saying, equipping believers to add value, make an impact by being spiritually sound. What is being spiritually sound? Social relevant and moral upright. I want to talk about being spiritual sound. Because we're talking about this spiritual sound, we're talking about the Holy Spirit here. We're talking about the works of the Holy Spirit here. We're talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Jesus was spiritual sound. The impact that he was making in the society, it was a spiritual impact. So if we're talking about spiritual sound, we're talking about not what you do when but what the Holy Spirit is doing through you. That's being spiritual sound. The Holy Spirit taking over. Now we, we read from the book of Judges how Gideon was spiritual sound when the Holy Spirit took over. How Deborah, how all the judges were taken over by the Holy Spirit and there was a great impact. And there was great impact in the society and they delivered people. People were freed. People were delivered. That's what we want. That's what we want that the Holy Spirit may help us. And to be spiritual sound, that means you ought to be connected to the Holy Spirit. And not being in the flesh all the time, but being in the spirit. Paul is saying that um, we will be able to fulfill the will of God if we are spiritual and spiritual minded. We'll be able to fulfill. What is the will of God? The will of God for you that you may have life and have life more abundantly. The will of God that the people around you, the world, that the world through you may know God, that the world through you may have the deliverance, that the world through you may be healed, that the world through you may have liberty. That's being spiritual sound. That's 
Gaubuzwa, ku society apu apu kona, bato bantu abantu funeka bakuazi, gogo zala gumo ingwele. Funeka bakuazi, ngenzi ne bebe sasu yesu ngayo, uba uyesu gumpilis, uba uyesu kaya kona, ziasu kazonge, izindo, uba uyesu kaya kona, izindo azenze geba zola ne, funeka kutoa kau kona ku strata kutoa. Kwezi strato, ufika kwa kwa saskatwe, I'm not sure if it happens here, but apekapa. Kwezi strato, saskatwe, siku nchua ipsugu, kwa na kutuwa kwa ufigubani, ya pela londolemu. Amen. That means, in, in, in that society, there was the presence, or there was the works of the enemy. But when you came through there, you destroyed the works of the enemy. Ibabile itu yesu wabo nakaliso ukuza atini achabalalise. Imi sebe nzika satan. Imi sebe nzika satan. Can you imagine how you feel? Uba abusha la kona na hawa ifu ni oyika na hawa bandu bonge ba oyika. Na hawa nchengu mtela katiku oyika. Amen. Fuleka sime Paul Bazola ne usela na si... I know that, I'm not sure if it's happening here, as I've said, but back in the days, um, we were so bold growing up as young men back in the, in the rural areas. You know, there were things like that. Amen. But those days will go there. And then when we come back, after a week or so, go to ICL because Sarah no sugil. Akfunenga ngas pasbaleko Sarah na guye sumbale guye sumbaleka yo. It says the Jesus was manifest to destroy the works of the devil. That means when he comes, he must be ngas Sarah niya kritagal. Anga klinga acha he must be ngas Sarah okay kuku Sarah napa aisa go stigel esi di stigel enga apa si akuyo le must be ngas because funeke kritagal. Amen. I want to read here that when it's upon us, when the guys know that are beyond our ability, because when we're saying the Spirit of the Lord is upon you, we mean that you will do things that are supernatural. Now, if we read from the book, as we are closing in the book of um, Judges, if we may go them, chapter 15, verse 14 and 15, the book of Judges, chapter 15. As I've said with Deborah, Deborah was just an ordinary woman, but when God anointed her, like you, you are an ordinary person, but with the anointing, you become, I uh, understand you, but what happened? Like Gideon, Gideon was just an ordinary person, a coward, he was a coward because he was afraid and he had a low self-esteem as if you read about him. When God said, Gideon, I'm here, and said, why have you left us? You know, God, I'm, I'm the youngest, and you know that my clan is not such a well-known clan here. And he, was, he had all those self low self-esteem and low confidence person, but when God came for him, he was a mighty man of valor. That's what's going to happen to you as a child of God. That's what happens to you. When you are with the Holy Spirit, you become a mighty man of valor. You become a mighty woman of valor. And nothing touches you with the anointing. Now, if we read from the book of Judges, chapter, four, chapter 14, 15, verse 14 and 15, it says, when he came to Lehi, the Philistine came shouting against him. Think about it. When he came, the Philistine, they were just coming, and they were shouting. This is some sort we're talking about here. They were shouting, and they said, we got you. You know, Utsarana, Christ, city, city, we got you. And he's looking at our society and saying, we got you. We're going to come still and destroy him. Then the spirit of the Lord, look at your neighbor, say, the spirit of the Lord came mightily. It says the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. I want you to know that the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. When the enemy were, enemy were, were coming and the the Philistines were coming and they said, we're going to destroy you. And the spirit of the Lord. You know, Bazalane, we know that our God is a God of plan. The Bible says that when the enemy comes, like the flood, he raises the standards. Now, the, the Philistines here, they were thinking that we got him, we're going to kill him. He is done. They may be, 
They may be saying that to you. The devil may be saying, let's, let's close as well. Let's stand as well closing. The devil may be saying that to you. And maybe your situation may be saying, we have come for you. You're going to die. We have tied you up like they tied Samson. The Bible says that he was tied up and the enemy was coming to finish him. The enemy was saying, we are coming. We're going to finish you. But you know, God had the plan. God had the plan. And through his spirit, the Bible said the spirit of God came mightily upon Samson. And Samson did things he could not do by himself. And the Bible says that, and all the things that they were using to tie him. It says that um, the ropes that were in his arms became like a flex. It becomes like a flex that is bent with fire. And he was free. And it says that, um, and his hands broke loose, and, 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 and the bones broke loose from his hands. He found a fresh jawbone of a donkey, reached out his hand and took it, and he dealt with the enemy. This is how we're going to deal with the enemy. When the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you, when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you, I want you to think about yourself today. Maybe you have the, all those bondage, all. Depression, but now the Spirit of the Lord is about to come upon you. And all the bondage. Maybe you like Paul and Silas. The Bible says that Paul and Silas, they were beaten and they were thrown into jail. And they, they, brought, the strong, they brought the strongest uh, prison guard to say, look upon these guys. Make sure. The Bible says they put them in the center, in the center of the prison. So there was no chance that they would be free. But you know what? The spirit of the Lord. Because... The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Because there was a spirit of the Lord. The Bible says that the shackles, when they were singing, and they were, they were singing hymns to God, the shackles were broken down. It is by the spirit of the Lord that you will be delivered, that you will make an impact. It is by the spirit of the Lord that you will kill the enemy, that you will disarm the enemy, that you will set free. We will set free our society. You will set free your family it is by the spirit of the lord i know you may look helpless because if you look at, at you look at him samson today uh, at the scripture samson looked as if he was he, he did not have a way out he looked as if he was helpless but our help comes from the lord it comes from the lord utiko shows up he is never Late, he will come on time. As we close in today, I want to close your eyes and think about, think about your situation today. And the spirit of the Lord in that situation. What God can do in that situation. What God can do. I know you may be saying, I've been through this for a longest time. Gideon was saying that. He was saying, Lord, we've been in this situation for a longest time. We've been harassed by the Philist, by, by the Midianites. We've, we, they, they take everything. But God said, this time around, the breakthrough has come. This time around, the, as I'm putting my spirit in you, you'll be able to deliver. Lord, we come to you, Lord. We come to you, Father God. Right now, Father God, we proclaim your deliverance, Lord. We proclaim your help, Father God. Robo shemenda rabasa be korobo shonda. We thank you, Lord. Siya bule la keba wo. Kamanda kamo ingoel in this place. Robo shemenda rabasa menga rabas shomonda. Kemendo robo shemenda. Kebo shemanda. Ba wo glenda o siya wa kulula makamanda elam. Nebanga wa apa makamanda la aya kulle kalam sanjenga inga kaya sukrestu ase Nazaret. The shackles are broken down in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we proclaim that they are broken down. They are breaking down right now in the name of Jesus. The doors that we're closing right now, Lord, they are opening in the name of Jesus. They are opening in the name of Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. That the enemy will be losing the battle right now. In the name of Jesus. The enemy will be losing the battle. One more time as we are praying. As every head bow, every eye closed. As you are closing your eyes. We are praying for that breakthrough. For the shuttles to fall down. In the name of Jesus. We are praying for the impossible to be possible. We are praying for those doors. Like the woman who had the blood issue. We're praying that this time around the blood will stop at once. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. You are the Lord of breakthrough. You are the Lord of miracles. You are the Lord of healing. Right now, Father God, we thank you, Lord, for the healings. We thank you, Lord, for the breakthroughs. We thank you, Lord, for the deliverances, Lord God Almighty. We thank you, Lord, for the open door. Yes, for today, Lord, you're saying in the word, I open the door. Yes, the door that I open, no one will close it. Yes, because I, as God, I have opened the door. Yes, we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, have your way, King of Kings. Yes, have your way, Lord. We believe, Lord, we believe, we believe. As I'm praying today, I, as I'm praying today, I, as I'm praying today, I,